This is an intro to Racket. Howdy. So we'll get started in Racket here. Up in the top is where you're going to write your functions that you're going to use multiple times. On the bottom we have an interpreter and I can ask it questions like what's 3? And I can ask it what's 3 plus 4? And it'll tell me. Notice that I'm not putting the plus between the 3 and the 4. I'm using a prefix order. I can also call other functions like ask it the square root of 16. And I can nest functions. And whenever I nest functions, I'm going to start with the inside most parenthesis. As you're exploring a new language, an important thing to keep in mind is that it should make sense. So the result of this, try and think about what it is, should make sense. So here it's zero. Just be if I just put times. If I only call the function times, then I'm going to get one out. You might disagree at times with what racket designers have decided should be should happen, but everything should make sense. So even this answer should have some logic to it. So it's 1 minus 1, and then it continues minusing the additional ones to go from 0 to negative 1 to negative 2. So all of these should make sense. So I have strings, um, but if I type in something without the quotes like that, I get an error message. It assumes then that it's a variable or an identifier, as Racket calls them, and it's not defined yet. We can define new things, like I can set a to be 3, and now when I type a, it'll be 3, or I can say plus a and 3, and that'll give me 6. And I can define other things, like I could define hello to be yo. And now, instead of getting an error message when I type hello, I get the message, I get the string yo. I can also have more interesting values that I'm setting things to. So I set a to be the expression plus 3 and 5. It evaluates that and sets a to be 8. I can also make things equal to functions. So I can set the add fun to be plus. And now I can call add fun on 3 and 4. And it works just like plus works. And plus will still work, but now add fun also works. So we've already defined the value of variables. We did a and add function and hello. So we can also define our own functions. Here I'm defining the function average. It takes in two arguments, x and y. Take a second and read this. Quotient is the um, version of division. So it's adding x and y and dividing it by 2. And it's going to floor that value. So we have a few important pieces here. Define is a keyword that I've going to use to both to define functions and to find uh, identifiers or variables. The function name is that first thing that comes after that parenthesis. I have the formal parameters or the arguments. The body is the content within that function. So this is what will get executed when you call the function average. And then when I, here's an example at the bottom, I call average 10 and 4 and I get 7 back. And these are the actual argument values. So that's what gets substituted in for x and y. Note that quotient is what I use instead of the slash sign for division, and this again is always going to floor it. I'm going to type this definition up at the top of my screen, and then I can click the run button in Racket to load that definition so that I can access it from the interpreter. Racket has an if. It has four pieces to it. The first one is the keyword if. The next thing is a test of some kind. Here I've labeled it as predicate. If that predicate is true or returns true, it'll return the true case, else it'll return the false case. So that's how if works. In cases where we have multiple cascading ifs that we might want to use, we have something in Racket called cond. So with cond, I have multiple tests and multiple results. So first it tests what I have labeled here as test1. If test1 returns true, it'll return the result here, shown on the right. Otherwise, it'll test test2. If that's true, it'll return this result. If Only if both test1 and test2 were false, we'll come to the else case and return this final result. Note, in most cases, open parenthesis means call this function. We can think about this, op this green open parenthesis before the if as call this function, or the green open parenthesis before the cond as call this function. But the cond also has these square brackets that are helping you keep track of which test goes with which return value or with which result. And again, we're only ever going to go test the next test if the previous test returned false. Here's two examples 
using one using if and one using cond. So take a look at those. In other languages, you might say something like x equals 5, y equals x plus 2. Here we're not going to do that. The main way that we're going to give variables values is by passing values to functions, and then those argument values will get the values that we pass to that function. Another way we have is to use let. Let is going to take a set of variables and their values. So here there's some extra parentheses. These don't mean to call the function. This blue parenthesis is grouping all of the variables and values that we're assigning. And then within this red square brackets, we can have any number of these, and we have a variable and then its value. And this value can be an expression as well, like plus 2, 3, and that will get evaluated and set to be the value of the variable. This green parenthesis closes the let at the bottom, and anything inside of this body, anything that goes there, will be able to access any of these variables. Here's an example. This is create a, a function called spam that takes in no arguments, and it creates two new variables, a and b. a is 3, b is 4, and then inside the body of this let here, it returns a plus b, which will return 7. Okay, we've been talking about using predicates, but we haven't actually looked at calling any predicates. So here's an example. I can check if 2 is equal to 2. I can check if numbers are odd, so odd is a built-in function. I can also give an example where those are used within an if. So if 3 is odd, I'm going to say duh, and otherwise I'm going to say what. In racket, functions act just like other variables. So when I type plus at the command line, it just returns the procedure plus. I can also return plus from my if. I say if 3 is odd, then I'm going to return plus, otherwise I'm going to return what. And this, because 3 is odd, returns plus. I can even use that. So I'll here, I'll have an extra parenthesis on the outside, then I say odd of 3 plus, otherwise I'll return what. And then that's going to return plus, and then I can add together 3 and 4. And it'll call what is returned by the if, which is plus, on 3 and 4, and I get 7. So parenthesis, open parenthesis, always means call this function. So that first parenthesis right here was saying call the function, call the function that gets returned by this if. If I do something like open parenthesis 7, that open parenthesis means call this function, but unfortunately 7 isn't a function, it's an application, not a procedure, so that counts as an error. So we never can have extra parenthesis, because a parenthesis always means call this function.